Hi everyone, this is Drell from Drell's Healing Garden and Journey and today we're going to be giving you guys a last day of the month of February tour. I'm sorry, I will apologize for the dogs, neighborhood dogs, but here is a quick view of the garden. Let's get started. So we don't have too much water. I mean, the water's been kind of dry. Um, a lot's been going on with this area. You can see I still have this one cabbage right here, but it's not doing too well. Lots of things have occurred. It's been cold, it's been hot, it's been... Look how it's looking today. So. I have this Romanesco broccoli still working on producing that baby. But here we're missing the Romanesco broccoli, which was there. This is actually um, canna lilies that I put in the container that I dug up out the ground some months ago. And then this morning I found this laying down on the ground. So we lost another Romanesco broccoli. But you can see that it had been rotting for a while. And I thought that it was recovering, but the wind took it. It just finally gave out and I found it on the ground. So I'm gonna put that in the compost. Um, there was a cabbage we had here. It is completely gone right now. Um, came out kind of the same situation that happened with this one, kind of the same one. The stem was really dark on the edges right there. And it just broke in the wind. It's been a lot of crazy weather going on. Rain barrels, containers, waiting waiting for rain, of course. Um, I have this dinosaur kale right here. It's doing pretty good, but something is munching on it. I'm not really sure. So we have the parsley back there and then there's a foxglove that's still there flour some more onion and garlic this bed is pretty much empty there's a snapdragon that was still trying to hold on right there but uh, this will be a flower bed for the spring so i'll be working on that um here my little tree is going to be coming back soon <laughs> but as you can see over here i've been working on this area this is the area that I plan to grow watermelon this year. Um, I just have these cattle panels uh, leaned up right now, but I'm actually going to put them up on the fence. So that's how I'm looking right now. You can see right here, I added some rocks in the back. And this is the soil that I mixed together with the clay, the native, my native soil. So let's go on over here. I have this new grow table. It has wheels on it. Just a regular metal cart. I sprayed it black uh, with black paint. Hopefully it helps with the rusting out here, but this is my grow table. Um, let's go over here. Some things to do here in the garden that I haven't showed in a while. So here I put in some of those sweet potato slips that I have up in the grow tent in the dining room. They were really getting really wild, so I went on and put them in the container until I can get that bed prepared for potato slips. So here we have some parsley right here. Um, everything else is dead or dying um i thought the crota was going to come back but it doesn't seem like it is here is that canterbury never produced a flower head but it's still alive and then here is the snapdragons i had here they're slowly going out with this crazy weather they're going in and out in and out they don't know what to do everything's confused then we have my herb section over here i do have to harvest that is the, um, let me go over there. Chalk 
chocolate mint, pineapple mint, rosemary right there. We have sage right there, lavender, rue. I mean, I'm sorry, it's a thyme. I think it's a Persian thyme. This is rue right here. This is cilantro. You can see it's going to flower. And then we have German chamomile. This is a hot and spicy thyme. And then this is a ginger mint. Isn't it beautiful? Rosemary. are looking okay considering the weather so here we can go over to the I have collards right here and then mustard greens right there I did harvest uh, about a week ago so they look pretty bare I'm probably gonna take them out pretty soon and start moving into the spring season so here I have some lettuce that I need to harvest this was the mes mescaline lettuce I need to harvest that before it gets warm again and it starts to bolt. So I have a Romanesco broccoli here and I believe that it is going to see if I'm not mistaken. That's what it looks like. And this one looks like it's going to flower and seed as well. But isn't that beautiful you guys? That is so pretty. I have all these huge onions <laughs> these were the uh, onion shallots that I got from the grocery store and look they're actually I believe those are seeds that's going to be producing pretty soon if I'm not mistaken they are huge and all of them pretty much have that on it like literally all of them like look how big yesterday was pretty windy so a lot of them are bent over but we have a Swiss chard right here, and then another one right there. I just harvested both of these from both of these uh, last week. Onions still, and then we have some snapdragons that are still surviving or trying to survive, and some pansies back here on the back of this bed. But the runs in the front not looking too well. The chart is beautiful. So we have more onion seeds coming. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm going to have tons of onion seeds. And then I have some butter crunch lettuce right here that I need to harvest as well as the other one. Look how pretty that is. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. My mustards are growing back because I just harvested those the other day as well. But they're growing back pretty fast. And I have a lone spinach up in there. I've never been able to harvest anything from her. She's always been covered by um, these huge collards and mustard leaves. But one thing I'm going to be aware of for the spring season is making sure that I am giving my plants enough space. Because I realize here in this bed that lettuce on the edges, it was cute when I first put it in, you know, lettuce on the edges and I had my mustards and collards and then I put the spinach right there, but I didn't realize <laughs> how big things were going to get. So, lesson learned you guys, but that's that bed. We have some onion chives, I mean some garlic chives here as well. I don't know if I showed that one. Let's go over to this other bed. And we have the same with the onions over here. Huge and produ producing seeds. And then I have some uh, radishes here that I need to harvest. So the leaf's not looking too good. But I know that they're ready. The stalks are pretty big. Yeah, there's something in there. I can pull it out. Oh, wow. Yeah, I may do a little harvest today. 
this one too. And we have those onions again. And look at the only lady bok choy, lit, purple lady bok choy that I had. She is going to see you guys. The temperatures have been so crazy here where I'm at on my, in my part of Texas, in Texas period, in a lot of places probably. But today it's like 45 degrees and it's 2 o'clock. And yesterday it was in the uh, 60s. Tomorrow is going to be in the 70s. So you can understand why things are going to seed as fast. Look at this. This is my China rose. China rose radishes. They're going to seed. I'm going to let them go to seed. I think it's a beautiful plant. Look how thick that stalk is. I'm sorry I'm sniffling you guys. But it's cold out here. And it's really, really big. It's a big one. It's really big. So, I'm going to let him do his thing and go to seed and collect those seeds. Here's another one going to seed. I might pull up one because I only need one to go to seed. So, but this one is even bigger than that one. It's even bigger. Yep, it's even, look, it's leaning. Underneath there. That's so crazy. <laughs> Here's another one that's getting ready to go to seed. So I'm definitely going to come and harvest these. Let me do that after I finish this video. But you can see things are going to seed very rapidly. I have this fennel that I need to harvest as well before it goes to seed. It's the only fennel that actually made it in this bed. And then we have this uh, Japanese red mustard that's trying to hold on. I may get a little bit to put in the salad to add to the salad that I have to harvest over there. So it may work out. <laughs> And we have the onions with the seeds once again coming up. And here's another Romanesco broccoli that I'm hoping I can actually harvest a head from. The other Romanesco broccoli that I have, they seem to have things going on with it, you know, so we'll get to see them all. But what is so amazing is that, look, the Romanesco broccoli, I didn't know that they would produce side shoots, and it is it produces side shoots I did not know that I thought it maybe it only did the one head so that's pretty cool this one is pretty big as well um, I can't really see if there's a head in there this plant is pretty tall yeah it is this one in there so we have at least two Romanesco broccoli that are still coming up but let me go back a little bit. We have tat soy that I had right here. It's going to seed. And I'm I'm quite okay with that. It's another one going to seed. So I'm going to let them. I'm sorry if I'm sniffling you guys. It's really cold out here. Then we have the only uh Pink Manunza, Mazina, Mazuna, Pink Mazuna, the only one there. I don't know, maybe I can harvest some of those little pieces because I've never tried it. <laughs> but it did survive out of the four that I did drop. So here's more onions with the onion seed pods growing on it. <laughs> And that's that for that bit. So let's go over here. This was the hibiscus that I had. I showed it a couple of uh, videos ago. I did a huge harvest, I mean, a huge prune on her. Um, I realized that um, hibiscus plants do not grow from old limbs. The leaves and other additional new branches do not grow from old limbs so you have to trim out the old ones and I gave the trim and I've seen some videos where they actually do a major trim like all the way down but 
I was pretty nervous about doing that. So that's a, a tiki hibiscus. I'm still working on these beds, filling them. But here is the bed with the other two Romanescos. I'm not sure if I'm going to get anything from this one. It doesn't seem like it's anything in there. And this one, I kind of do. I see. I see some of it. Yeah, pieces of it. So hopefully before it gets really hot, um, I can actually get a head from them. It might be a small one, but at least it'll be a Romanesco broccoli, right? We can take what we can get. So I still have this very very stunted cabbage <laughs> purple cabbage is right there but i did put in more onions in this bed underneath here and over here as well and you guys this this is the remnants of big bertha she is no longer big bertha she is shriveled up bertha you can see she's beginning to shrivel up. I thought maybe that she would grow some of her leaves back. I don't know what happened, but she was developing a Romanesco broccoli. And it just did not happen. She struggled for a bit. And I know the cold was that freeze that we had in January was really harsh. But if you look down, like her stalk still looks pretty good down there. But as she gets close to the top, you can see how she's shriveling up. So I'll be taking her out soon. I just want to give you guys a glimpse of how Big Bertha turned out. You know, I don't want to always be just showing you guys the good stuff. You know, there's things that, you know, die in my garden as well. You know, just like all of us, you know, happen to lose a plant that we were looking forward to you know so that's life things happen you know but i'm not gonna stop dropping seeds and there'll be another big uh big bertha you know maybe next season so here is the uh greens <laughs> the um huge onions let's see how big that is that is huge that is huge Um, the two cabbages I have right here are harvested them. Um, there's a video that will be, if it's not already out, it will be out soon. I did do a huge harvest and I did get some footage of it. So I will share that with you all. Here is Georgia. Peach tree. She's doing pretty good. Um, I haven't been seeing her waking up. I don't see any buds forming on her and I'm happy about that um that she's not ready to but she's been doing pretty well on the ground um I did put a stake in you know whatever hold up so when it does get windy she's not going to you know snap so just want to make sure that she's secure there's a lot of things that have gone over in the tree section you guys a lot a lot has grown over here a lot of things have changed so let's get started. So let's start here. Um, our last tour, I had these cuttings. Uh, these are the blue damson plum cuttings that I purchased from Etsy. And they were doing pretty well. As you can see, they were getting leaves on them right there. And then there's one right there that had leaves on it. And right there so three out of six wasn't bad but with the temperatures coming and going and me bringing it inside outside it just could not take it anymore and I don't think that they're gonna come back so I'm just gonna try again you win some you lose some right but you keep trying you keep trying you guys <laughs> so here is the black mission fig that I won on uh, Broke Farmer's channel. It's doing pretty good. <laughs> when I first got this plant, um, she had no leaves at all, but as you can see, she has totally woke up. 
We also have this new peach tree that I just purchased uh, from Tropa Supply for $15. It is the red skin peach. Some of her, bed, her buds are waking up. I didn't notice that. But she looks pretty good. Behind her we have the Santa Rosa plum. A Santa Rosa plum tree right here. She's not, doesn't, doesn't look like she's waking up at all. I need to lean her another way. I'll fix that later. But she's looking pretty good. Doesn't look like she's waking up quite yet. Which is great. So let's go on over to the goji berry bush. I hope you guys can hear me. Okay, so we're gonna go over to the goji berry bush and she's looking pretty good. She's grown back most of her leaves. She looks really like a bush now instead of just vines. So I'm gonna trim back all the parts that I don't see any green growing just to give her a nice trim once it really warms up and we are in spring actually. So she's gonna get that. And then we have a methylene plum right here. No, it's just a stick but it has some leaves. Can you focus? Focus. Okay, let's go down here. Yes, here's the Nettley plum. It was just a stick when I bought it. It was a bare root stick. <laughs> but as you can see, it is growing leaves. It's waking up. And then back there, I have one of my key lime trees that I need to up pop immediately um, as you can see she's looking kind of yellow and some of her leaves are turned in not really sure what's going on with her so I have to do some more research and try to diagnose her what's going on so let's come here I have my uh, four cherries Barbados cherry uh, trees right here that I purchased from Amazon. Um, these are old leaves. You can see new ones were coming out, but it looks like they're wilting because it's cold again. Now, all last week, we were in the 70s and 80s last week. And yesterday and today, we were in the 40s and 50s. You know, this weather is so crazy and my trees just don't know what to do. So, it's going to warm tomorrow, so hopefully they can hold on. So, here we have the LSU Purple Fig. She's just now waking up as well when it was warm all last week. And now it's cold, so not sure how. This is my first time having fig trees. So we'll see but this weather is crazy you guys so then we're gonna go here to the Anna apple this is an Anna apple right here you know it's just a stick but she has some leaves at the top of her right there she is slowly waking up she didn't have that when I first bought it so that's the Anna apple and back there we have my um, Fuyu persimmon tree um, it looks like she's getting ready to wake up as well you can see some of the buds on her and then we have my Celeste fig tree right here She's really waking up. When I first purchased her for $15 at Tractor Supply as well, um, she didn't have any leaves on her. But that's so cool. Look, look at you guys, the little fig right there. I'm gonna wind up taking that off, of course, but she's so cute. She's so cute. So that's the Phil Celeste. And then we have Oh, I can't pronounce the name. It's the Italian fig. I can't remember the name. Well, I can't pronounce it. Let me 
see the name. But I just bought this from Lowe's. So um, that's a new addition. So I have four figs total. Here is my papaya tree. So that's one. And then right next to her is another one. And they're doing okay. Considering that it's cold outside today, of course. But I'm keeping an eye on the temperature and they can withstand a lot of temperature as long as it's um, above 40 something. So we haven't been down in the 30s, thank goodness. So I'm just going to leave them out since it's going to be back in the 70s tomorrow. So let's go on. Here is the apple crisp stick. <laughs> She's waking up as well. You can see kind of on her tip a little bit. You can see some of the buds coming along the stick as well. But she's waking up as well. So this is a honey crisp. And then behind her, I have my other key lime, which she looks very good. Except down at the bottom, I just look down there. Yeah, she's looking like she's getting the same thing as that one. So I just think we need to be up higher. And it's about that time, but I'm trying to wait till spring is really here you know so then we're gonna come here to the elderberry tree she looks amazing um i've had her for two years now not really sure when you know we'll be expecting to get you know elderberries but i do want to put her in a bigger container so i'm looking forward to potting her in the spring as well and then i have my pink guava you can see she had been growing her leaves back as well some of the big ones are still on there but she was putting on leaves and i hope that she continues to do that once it warms up tomorrow and around here in this pot i have a uh, malabar spinach this is why i grew my last my malabar, malabar spinach last summer and a lot of the seeds fell in there as you can see they're growing back said many times in my previous videos that once you have Malabar spinach in your garden you have it forever and it's a great thing that we love it so we love it here is my pomegranate tree it is the wonderful pomegranate um she is really growing her leaves back i'm excited about that i'm going to be fertilizing her and up potting her as well for the spring and I think that's it for the trees, you guys. So that's an update on the trees. Then we're gonna come over here to this bed over here. Um, I just harvested a huge Romanesco broccoli from right here. So that video, if it's not out already, will be coming soon. But here's another one. You can see how they're separating. That's why I think that um, they're going to seed. Seems like they're making their own little separate little ones, you know, on this one. It's not a compacted head. So I'm going to let it do its thing, see if I can get some seeds, you know. So here is another cabbage that is stunted. I was trying to see if it was going to maybe give me some seeds. I don't know, but it's been ate up pretty bad. But it's still standing. <laughs> So, more onions, garlic in this bed as well. And then I just harvested from this bed. This is a Swiss, green Swiss chard bed. Harvested um, from this bed as well about a week ago. So, there should be a video coming soon. And I still have some dill in here, which is amazing. The freeze killed all the dill until I harvested and then I saw that it was a dill in there. I was like, okay. I love it. I love finding surprise food. <laughs> but my chart is doing really good. I may get another harvest from there. And then we're going to come over here to the uh, coneflower or echinacea bed. You can see they're waking up. They have burst through. <laughs> The cedar and the mulch and the uh, compost that I put underneath here. There was three of them. Look at 
those very long legs all in the plants so this one came out first then it was this one but then it slowed down and then this one just emerged a couple of days ago so i'm excited about that my flowers are waking up and then we're gonna come over here to the uh, foxglove bed daddy long legs why why are you my fox gloves? So these are all fox gloves. You see, they've been, they're doing pretty well. They're getting big, especially since the um, that freeze came through in January. And then I have a calendula flower here. I'm not sure what that is on it. What are those little black things? I don't know. That's interesting, I don't know what that is. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but it has little black specks right there, and right there, and right there, I can see them. And so, um, I might have to spray some uh, bug spray or something on it, because I haven't put anything over here. So, yesterday I believe that I saw some aphids on my blueberries. So, let's take a look. Wait, let me take this glove off so we can zoom in. I think that this is aphids, you guys, on my blueberries. So I sprayed my mixture on it. I'm gonna see how well it does. But um, I sprayed it. I'm gonna spray it again, probably tomorrow. Might have to be tomorrow evening since it's gonna warm up. But we're gonna have to get rid of those aphids. Like I haven't even put them in their permanent spot yet. But I gotta get them in in the bed. But I believe that this one has aphids. Um, this one looks like it's getting them as well. And I know if one has it, they all probably have it because they're in a close vicinity. And they're all some type of blueberry, even though they're different blueberries, but it's still blueberries. So these three plants I plan to put in that bed right there. So that is my plan to make that entire bed just my blueberry bushes. And here we have the evening primrose. She is putting on her leaves, putting her leaves back on. And it looks like she's trying to develop a yellow flower. So I'm excited to see how she blooms for the spring. I'm going to fill them in as well. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm still working a lot of things in the garden, you guys. But here are the onions. Um, I had to plant more onions because some of them did die during the freeze but some of them did live not a lot of them but I just went on and bought some more onions and just replaced what had died away okay let's go over here to the rose bush the perennial rose bed right and as you can see it's been Big, huge changes. Look, it's even producing rose heads. I'm so excited, you guys. Wow, I'm so excited. I've never had a rose bush before. <laughs> that is so cool. And this one is doing the same thing as well. This one was yellow. That's the yellow rose. This one is the white rose. Rose heads as well. <laughs> it's so cool. And 
and then this one that I had over here it's not doing good at all this was the red one and it is doing very very bad I tried spraying it I thought it had um, some uh, fungal issues so I used some copper fungal side and I also uh, minimized the watering because it was saying that it was uh, possibly being overwatered. so I stopped watering it as much as I was and these all of them were bought, were bought at the same time and this one's not making it and I should have knew that something was going to go wrong with this one because I'm going to be honest when I was putting it in the ground I noticed that the stock wasn't really solid on the on the rosa bush but I have bought purchased a replacement for it I just have not put it in the ground yet it is over here in sick call for a while just to see how it's going to adapt to the garden so I do have another one that I'm going to put in and as you can see the stock is pretty 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 solid right here and this one is the um, lilac silvery rose I thought that it was sounds beautiful so we're going to see how that looks over there so I'll be putting that in the ground probably within a week or two but I think that is it everyone I really do appreciate you all being here with me of course as I always be sure to let you all know that I am so grateful I'm so grateful for you all to be here with me and I can share my love and inspirations for the garden and aspirations for the garden as well. And I hope that you guys are having an amazing day. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I have more videos coming pretty soon and you don't want to miss any of them make sure to comment and like and you all be sure to have an amazing day enjoy your February 29th <laughs> happy gardening everyone <laughs>